Now they've cut the blood time again. Nick Sphere with a 12-1 lead, only scoring two points here in this period after putting up 10 in the first. Now they're going to wait for Nick to pull his knee pad up. He's got one of those sleeves on his left right knee. Sice looks to stand. Sphere traps the arm. Two on one on the right wrist. They stand again. Reaches back for the switch, and the period is over. Second period comes to an end. Nick Sphere leading it 12-1. And Zeiss has chosen to start down to begin the third. Zeiss stands. Sphere grabs and traps that left arm. Takes him down to the mat. Zeiss stands again. Sphere grape finds the right leg. Zeiss steps out of that. Sphere again. Grape finds the leg and they spin off the edge of the mat. One minute and 50 seconds left here in our second wait. Zeiss again tries to sit out. Spear traps the arm. Zeiss stands. Spear looking for the standing cradle. Can't get it. Zeiss escapes. It's 12-2. 12-2 our score and both men back on their feet. Spear looking for wrist control here. He's gotten a couple of power takedowns on Zeiss. Zeiss really wants to work the legs. They go head to head, Zeiss faints. Sphere steps in, Zeiss looking for that fireman again. Sphere trying to convert it. And they're off the edge one more time. Down to 119 remaining in the third period of this matchup at 113 pounds. They'll circle, Zeiss shoots, Sphere underhooks the left side. And they'll pop back to their feet again. Sphere and Zeiss, Zeiss shoots one more time. Sphere sprawls a bit. Zeiss still has a hold of Nick's inside thigh of his right leg. Spear trying the hard cross face, trying to drive the head back in and get the cradle hooked if he can. Nick likes that cradle, needs to break the arm. Now almost has the back exposed. Two point takedown for Sphere. And he leads it 14 to two. If he can turn him over and get three back points here, it's a technical fall for Nick Sphere. He's got plenty of time with 43 seconds left. Sphere trying to power Zeiss over. Zeiss looks to turn. Now Zeiss just bellies out in the middle of the mat, not doing anything with 28 seconds left. He already has one stalling warning. Spear trying to get him turned. Zeiss turns back in him. Spear hard cross face. He's got the back exposed. Two. He needs to turn him some more. One, two, three. To get three points or two. Just going to get two so far. It's 16 to two, he still needs one more and we got more blood time. Sphere needs to turn him one more time here. Couldn't quite get that five count for the technical fall. He's one point short right now. And your third blood, but remember, Zeiss also has a stalling warning. So if Sphere attacks and Zeiss backs up, he could get it that way. It's a couple of options here for Sphere with only six, seven seconds left. Turn that extra bonus point for the Brawlers. They're going to check Sphere, and they're going to have to wipe off some blood on him as well. Up, oh, Sphere's going to release him, put him up, try and get a takedown to end this thing. Sphere needs a takedown, reaches for the ankle, lifts, and gets it. Technical fall. 18-3. Eighteen to three. Sphere picks up another five for the Prowlers, who now lead it eleven nothing. We get ready for 120 pounds next on 1460 Real Country. Well, that worked. Noah Jacobson on the mat for the Prowlers here. The freshman is 19 and 12 on the year. I believe that's Chandler Mickelson, who's 32 and 11, the sophomore for Purim. But we've not heard an official announcement yet. 
Underhook by Noah. Little head shuck there. It is Mickelson. Mickelson shoots. Jacobson sprawls. Now they're back to their feet again. Noah's been on a run as of late. Prowler's up 11 early, looking for the trip with Mickelson. Jacobson steps away from that and then shucks his hands free again. First minute is gone here at 120 pounds. The two men go forehead to forehead and circle in the middle of the ring. Mickelson again looking for wrist control on a treep. And a warning for riding the wrist. Called here. Mickelson shoots. Jacobson traps the chin. And Mickelson stands. Down to the final 30 seconds here of the first period. Mickelson now changing levels. Drops to one knee and pops back up with 24 seconds left. Mickelson and Jacobson. Jacobson shoots in on a single but drives him off the mat. On the play, still both in neutral. They'll settle in again here. 15 seconds left in the period. Mickelson shoots. Jacobson catches the head, now has an ankle. Trying for takedown here before the period is over. A little bit of a whizzer in by Mickelson. Jacobson traps ahead, and nobody will score in the first period. No scoring in the first period at 120 pounds between Noah Jacobson for the Prowlers and Chandler Mickelson for the Yellow Jackets. Mickelson will start in the down position for period number two. Mickelson looks to stand. Jacobson throws in a waist wrap on the right-hand side. Mickelson turns back in on him, gets the head. Jacobson trying to free as though they call reversal here. And giving two points to Mickelson. Trying to decide who's getting back points. Mickelson is. Now Jacobson rolls through when they're off the edge of the mat. Two points reversal, two points near fall for J Mickelson. And he leads 4 0. Good scramble on the edge. Now Noah to his feet. Separates the hands and turns back in for the escape. It's 4 1. Both men are forehead to forehead again. Road crew is jumped up by a 10 nothing margin in their matchup, getting a major decision and a pin in their first two weights. Now Noah Jacobson here has the takedown and has Mickelson on his back. Mickelson trying to bridge his way out of it. Jacobson with a deep, and I mean deep, reverse half in. Got back points for sure, now trying the underhook. Now Mickelson stands, three points near fall, and now an escape. And our score is 6-5 now in favor of Noah Jacobson after the big move. Jacobson working the head again down to the final 40 seconds here. Boy, he had Mickelson in a bad way for a moment. Reaching for that leg again. Mickelson trying to shuck him off with 34 seconds left. Both been a little off balance. Mickelson trying to pull down on the arm. Jacobson spins behind. Now if he get Mickelson the mat, it's two points. Mickelson stumbling his way through it. Jacobson lifts and turns and gets two points takedown. Jacobson with another takedown and an 8-5 lead now in the final 10 seconds of the period. Jacobson with a hard half in on the right-hand side, turns it into a power half. Jacobson trying to turn him over, now switches the half to the right-hand side. We're near the edge, and that will end the period. Big period for Noah Jacobson. He leads 8-5 after two, back in a moment on 1460. Well, off the whistle, Noah Jacobson to his feet. Mickelson hangs onto an ankle, trips him down, puts him on his back, but Noah rolls out of it. No points awarded. 
Noah Jacobson up 8-5 here with a minute and a half to wrestle at 120 pounds. Prowlers leading the overall match, trying to advance to the section final by 11-0 right now. Mickelson trying to throw in a cradle here. Jacobson trying to kick out of it, but now Mickelson has the cradle locked. Noah's in trouble. He's given up three for sure, and that'll make it 8-8. Noah trying to split the hands of Mickelson and kick out of it here. The Perham fans rather think he's pinned. Referee's saying no, no, no. Now Mickelson's hands are free. And he'll get the three points near fall and tie it at eight. And now the escape for Jacobson makes it 9-8. Jacobson by one with 45 seconds left. Jacobson in on the head again. Collar tie left hand side. Tries to snap down. Mickelson steps out of it. Again, trying for a little bit of a power move. Noah Jacobson. Mickelson looking for that ankle. That's what he's done the whole time. Now tries to head shock Noah by. 25 seconds left. Jacobson protecting a one-point lead. Neither man has a stalling warning. Jacobson pushes off on Mickelson's shoulders. Now back in on the head again with 19 seconds left. They dance in the middle again. Mickelson riding that one wrist, which he got warned for earlier. Down to 11 seconds. Mickelson shoots twice. Jacobson sprawls twice. Now back to his feet. And they're off the edge of the mat, and they're going to give one for a stalling warning. Evidently, they did call Nicholson for stalling, or Jacobson for stalling earlier. So with the stalling point, we are tied. And Mickelson puts Jacobson on his back on a takedown right at the end. And gets the takedown and three points near fall to end it. And your final is Chandler Mickelson winning it 14 to 9. He picks up three points for the Perm Yellow Jackets when it looked for all intents and purposes like Noah Jacobson was going to win that one. Three points for Perm. The Prowlers with an 11-3 lead here as we get ready for 126 pounds. One twenty-six. Looks like Nicholas Peters, the ninth grader at 20 and 19 for Perm. And Keegan Hermanson, an eighth grader at 16 and 20 for the Prowlers. Prowlers up 11 to three in the team scoring. And they're off the edge already. They work in the middle, Hermanson circles. Now Peters shoots, has a single on. Hermanson trying for the cross face, looking to stuff the head on the right hand side. Now trying to control the hips. They're well off the edge of the mat and back to the center. Back to the middle. Nobody has scored yet. Keegan looking for a single. Then Peters looks for a single. Peters on that single again. Hermanson trying to stuff the head. The power of that head down to the mat. Peters stands, still controlling the left leg of Hermanson. Hermanson again stuffs the head and drops Peters to the mat. Peters has given up one leg, driving forward, and they're off the edge again and back to the middle. 107 left. And once again in, Hermanson gets two for the takedown. Hermanson with the takedown for two. The Prowlers have led in every match. They won the first two, lost a heartbreaker in the 120-pound class, and now they're off the edge again. Hermanson will ride left side. Puts that waist wrap in from the right. There's the whistle. Peters stands. Hermanson trapping the wrist. Coaches are telling him to let him go. And now lifts him back, and that's an illegal suplex. Going to call unnecessary roughness penalty point. Yeah, that was an illegal suplex. That would have been great in Greco, but we're not wrestling Greco. So now they're going to talk things over here. Coach Geyser talking with Keegan while the trainers take a look.
at Peters. Hermanson with a great lift, but dumped him right in the back of his neck, and that's an illegal throw. It's unnecessary roughness and a penalty point. So it's 2-1 right now, but I believe the way this works, if Peters cannot continue, he would get the win because he was injured on an illegal, an illegal move. So we'll see. Oh, is it Detloff, not Peters? You can't hear the PA guy, and he's a half a, and he's a half a mat late. So excuse me, it's Tegan Detloff. Two one is the score, and they're still looking over Detloff here. Detloff, by the way, is twenty-two and sixteen. He says he can go. Flops back down onto the mat. And now Coach Geyser has told Her Hermanson to cut him, which would make it 2-2. By the way, for those of you who are wrestling uh, newbies, cut him means release him. Doesn't mean to injure him. Attempted a Granby roll, but Hermanson traps the ankle here. Now Keegan trying to throw in a waist wrap and a two-on-one on the left arm. Holds over that left ankle again. Trying to turn Detloff over. Detloff maintaining as we wind toward the end of the period. Hermanson looking for two on one, a little bit of a ball and chain here. And we're down to the end of the first. Keegan Hermanson's going to hold a 2 1 lead after one period at 126. Back in a moment. Hermanson starts in the down position and promptly escapes for a 3-1 lead here in the 126-pound weight class. Prowler's leading at 11-3 right now. Hermanson working on that right shoulder a little bit. He's got a bunch of that uh, athletic tape, that training tape on that shoulder that they use these days. So he's had some problems with that shoulder. Detloff shoots, looking for a double. Hermanson again trying to stuff the head, now reaches for the hips, trying to throw him through, but no, we'll give up. No, he did not. Scrambles back to his feet, no takedown. Hermanson still stuffing the head. Detloff has converted it to a single, looking for the trip, and now has the two points. And we're tied at three. Detloff reaching for two on one now on Hermanson's left arm. Keegan trying to free his hands. Hermanson to his feet, trying to step away, but Detloff trips him back down again. Detloff trying to throw in a half on the right-hand side as a waist wrap in from the left. Hermanson stands, trying to peel that hand away, does. Turns back in and gets his second escape of the period. And Keegan with a 4-3 lead here. And 40 seconds left. Hermanson shoots in. Standing wizard attempt here by Detloff. Hermanson lifts, but they're off the edge, and we'll go back to the center. Both men will circle in the center here with 30 seconds left in period number two. Keegan Hermanson holding to a 4-3 lead at 126. Hermanson faints at a single and Keegan steps away. Keegan Detloff and Keegan Hermanson. Hermanson pats the head on the left-hand side and then tries to shoot. Now Detloff will shoot. Hermanson sprawls, trying to stuff the head, looking for a head shuck here. Tries twice, now has a body lock in, reaching for the trip, but they're off the edge again. Five and a half seconds left here in period number two. Hermanson with a 4-3 lead. Both men on their feet again. And the period comes to an end. 4-3 Hermanson. Detloff has choice and chooses down to start the third. Hermanson will ride left. Detloff looking for that roll. It's not there as Hermanson traps the left arm. Now Detloff backs out and turns in and gets the escape, and it's 
4-4 here. Boy, a takedown for Hermanson, who has the only had a takedown in the first period, would be huge right now. Keegan shoots, has a single, trying to convert it to a double, and gets two. Big takedown right on the edge of the mat for Keegan Hermanson, and then they'll go off the edge. Hermanson leads it 6-5. A minute and a half left here in period number three at 126. Up and now a caution. Heard the whistle on the other mat. Road crew dominating Detroit Lakes with 25-0 there. Detloff stands, Hermanson hanging on and takes him back to the mat again on a big trip. Coach Geyser was telling him to cut him, and Keegan said, no, I think I'll just take him back to the mat and we'll get more time off that clock. And off the edge again. Coach Geyser telling him to cut him, so they're going to, I think. Detloff looks to circle out of it again, tried for that inside Granby roll. Again, Hermanson trapping the ankle and the wrist. Keegan trying to work on a chicken wing on that left-hand side, now looking for wrist control. Detloff brawls back out. Detloff turns back in and has the escape. 6-5, Hermanson with 50 seconds left to wrestle. Another takedown here by Keegan would be huge, leading at 6-5. He's got two already in the match. Both men hand fighting. Detloff looks to shoot Hermanson sprawls. They'll reset to the center again. Down to 30 seconds left. Both men forehead to forehead. Now Detloff reaching for a collar tie left side. Now Hermanson shoots in on a single. Detloff trying for a standing wizard. Hermanson tripped, but they're off the edge of the mat in front of the Perham bench. And our referee lost his whistle. It came right off his lanyard. So a little equipment repair here for our official before we move on. Hermanson and Detloff, 24 seconds left. Hermanson leading it 6-5. Both men shoot, Detloff shoots, and Hermanson blocks. Detloff shoots again, Hermanson covers the head this time, and they'll go off the edge of the mat. Down to 11 seconds left. Coach Geyser telling Keegan he's got to shoot because of that one stalling call. 11.5 seconds left, Detloff shoots, Hermanson touched the head, now reaching for the leg. Keegan trying to drive him by, Detloff trying to shuck him free. Four seconds, three, Hermanson kicks through it and gets two takedown at the end of the match for an 8-5 lead. And an 8-5 win. 8-5, Keegan Hermanson puts up three more for the Prowlers, who lead it 14-3. 132 pounds coming next. That was big because Eli's got problems. <laughs> well, Eli's a good wrestler. But he just doesn't have enough match time this year. The Yellow Jackets bump, bump Nicholas Peters up a weight class to 132. Peters. The ninth grader is 20 and 19. And for the Prowlers, Eli Walebski, two and four. Eli's biggest problem this year is he just hasn't gotten a ton of mat time. So we'll see what he can do. They've given two here. Two Peters. Peters trying to set it in here. Walebski has a leg. He can get his head free. But Peters tried trying to work on a cradle. Walebski kicks his leg free. Reaches over the top and gets the reversal for two. Big move by Eli. Nice counter wrestling. Walebski with the nice counter. Now trying to work armbar on the left-hand side. Trying to throw in that half. Peters sits. They look to stand. Walebski puts in the legs. And they'll circle around. Reversal by Peters. 
Then Peters throws in a pinning combination here, trying to get Walebski's back exposed. There's one count. There's a two count. I've never understood that back exposure because if your shoulder is on top of the other guy's body, it's not a possible pinning combination. Now Walebski stands and gets an escape. Walebski trails it 4-3 here in the first. 17 seconds left in the first. They'll scramble through, and Peters will get a quick takedown. Peters with a 6-3 lead here, and eight seconds left in the period. Peters trying to throw that cradle in again. Walebski trying to free his arms and legs, and the period is over. Eli trails 6-3 at 132 pounds after the first but has acquitted himself well so far. He defers, he has choice. Peters makes choice and takes the down position. Walebski will ride on the left side with a waist strap in on the right here. Peters tries to sit back on his ankles, reaching back for the switch. It's not there as Walebski traps a chicken wing on that left side. Now Walewski trying to step over the right hip here. Walewski trailing at 6-3 right now. At 132 pounds. Prowlers so far on the first four weights have three wins and a heartbreaker at 120. Now Peters turns back in, but Walebski right now still in control, still has the head. The Peters steps onto him, now they roll through it. And instead, Walebski with back points. Walebski counters his way through it and puts Peters on his back here. So instead of the reversal, because it would have been reversal, reversal each way, the referee waves it off and gives the back points. Three points near fall, and we're tied at six. So Walebski with the three points near fall has tied it up at six. Nice counter wrestling that time by Eli. Looked like he was in trouble, kicked his way through it, and didn't not only didn't give up the reversal, but scored three. Referee could have gone reversal, reversal in 3-2. It could have been 5-2 on that rotation. It still would have been a tie. Peters trying to sit in on the switch here, reaching in deep for it, and has it. Peters on the reversal, takes an 8-6 lead in the final 40 seconds here of the second period at 132. Peters throwing in the half again. Trying to step over here. He just pinned himself. I think we're going to get a defensive pin here. Boy, we saw one of those in the quarterfinals the other night, a defensive pin. As Peters trying for the back points, and he got three. Just about pinned himself. Walewski trying for points here before the period is over. Trails it now 11 to six. As we go to the third. Headed to the third here, Walewski has choice. And he'll take the down position. Eli with some work to do, down five. But I'll tell you what, Peters was not far from being pinned on a defensive pin. In fact, he might have had both blades down. Referees aren't always real prone to do that, but if you bury both of your shoulders to the mat, whether you're in control or not, you're pinned. That's what the rule says. And a potentially dangerous there by Peters as he cranked around on the right arm of Eli Walebski. And they'll reset to the center again. 145 left here at 132 pounds. Walebski down 11-6. Trying for armbar and lever on the right side here is Peters. Walebski reaching for the half. It slips off. Now a hard cross face here by Peters who looks to throw in the cradle. Peters has the cradle in. Walewski rolled right through it. No back points. Peters trying to pull him back. Does, but right to his backside. So they're in a seated position. 
Now Peters is drawing some back points here. But is underneath Eli, Eli Walewski's left shoulder. Oh, they're going to give him the fall anyway. The fall for six points. And the Prowlers lead it 14-9 as we go to Kale Geyser at 138 next. Kale Geyser for the Prowlers. And they bump Bayer up from 132 to 138. So the Yellow Jackets shuffling their lineup here, trying to match up as the Prowlers have the early lead. 14 to 9. Carson Bayer, the sophomore. He is 20 and 19. Kale Geyser is 35 and 8. Geyser with the familiar underhooks that he absolutely loves. Trying to get that body lock in. Has the hands locked. And there's the throw and puts Bayer right on his back, but Bayer rolls through it. Didn't give him the takedown yet. Now did. Takedown two. Takedown two for Geyser. He leads it 2-0. Geyser body lock in on the right, trying to work an arm bar on that left wrist. Guys are working him over right in front of the Perm bench. And they'll step off. And back to the center here, 38 seconds left in the first. Guys are will settle in here again, riding the left side. Bayer looks to sit. Kale Geyser, the junior, 35 and eight on the year. Deep chicken wing underhook from the left-hand side. Geyser trying to turn him over. Has a back exposed here, I believe. There's the back points being counted. Not a real pinning combination from here, but you're going to get the three near fall out of it. Hasn't given up the hold yet, so hasn't been given the points yet, although they're there. And that'll end the period. Three points near fall and a 5 nothing lead for Kale Geyser as we get ready for the second period at 138 on 1460 Real Country. Geyser starts period two in the down position, promptly escapes. Now in on the head right in front of the Perm bench. Guys are looking for another takedown, but they'll go off the edge and both men on their feet. Kale Geyser, the Prowler Jr. And a caution for going too quick. Kale likes to get off, shot out of, out of a gun on that whistle, but he's oftentimes too quick. Now Byer steps back and they'll reset. Underhook here on the left-hand side by Geyser, trying to get that right arm in as well. Bayer trying to fight it off with wrist control. Now shoots for a single. Now an overhook by Geyser. Bayer shoots again, and they're off. Again, right in front of the Perm bench. They'll reset here. Both men in the middle. Geyser leading it six to nothing. One minute left, period number two at 138 pounds. They'll circle again. Bayer with a little head shuck. Now Geyser, that underhook on the right-hand side. Bayer trying to fight through it. Now Geyser has the left in. Bayer trying for that wrist control again. Now Geyser shoots in the right. Has the hands hooked. Here's the body lock. 
Byer trying to slip out of it. Guys are looking for the trip and to dump him on his back. Down to 29 seconds. Byer with a headlock and they'll go off the edge before anybody can score. Byer a good job of countering that body lock. And back to the middle again. Geyser leads it 6 0. Byer shoots. Geyser stuffs ahead, hard cross face, trying to spin his way behind here. And will get behind for the two. Two take down and an 8 0 lead with seven seconds left in the period. They count it down here. Kale's not going to have time to turn him. It's 8 0 Geyser after two as we get ready for the third. On the other mat, the road crew with a 25-9 lead over the Lakers right now. Geyser will start in the down position to begin the third period. Kale to his, or rather, Byer to his feet, trying to separate the hands. Geyser steps around in front and lifts. Almost took him back to the mat. Still trying to trip him down and does. Geyser checking for the cradle. It wasn't there, so he puts the hooks in on the left side hip. Geyser trying to power across here with a hard cross face. Byer just grabbing on to Geyser's left wrist. Don't really know how he's trying to get out in that position, but he's got a whole handful of Geyser's left wrist. And a stalemate going to be called. A minute and 20 seconds left. Kale Geyser up 8 nothing. Geyser doesn't want to give up points right now to Carson Byer, because right now he's got a major decision. Up by the eight, he throws a half in on the right-hand side, waist wrap from the left. Byer trying to separate that hand off the waist, stands, and gets the escape. Now Geyser needs a takedown. Big shot here by Geyser, and Byer steps away. Trying for wrist control. Geyser needs a takedown for that major decision. He's only up seven. Circles his way down, shoots in in a single, converts it to a double, takes him down, and now traps the legs and traps the head as well. Has back points. He's got time to pin him. They're right in the center of the mat. He's got to get control as Bayer hangs on to that right toe, left toe, and the referee slaps his hand away and says, you can't do that. Going to be three points near fall here and a stalemate. So guys are now up 13 to one. If he can turn him one more time, he can get the tech fall here and pick up an extra bonus point for the Prowlers. Byer looking to sit, bellies out. Guys are trying to throw in the half, sits over that left hip. Down to 14 seconds left. Byer not really doing much and he's been called for scalling once already. Geyser trying to work him over here and get a quick tip. Did, rolled him through, but not enough for the points. Geyser's going to win it 13-1. to And pick up four more for the Prowlers. 18-9, to Thief River Falls leads as we go to 145 pounds coming up. At 145 pounds for the Prowlers, Ethan Lane. Lane on the year, the sophomore is 24 and 18 and has a quick takedown. And he's wrestling here against Caden Felt, the junior. And Felt is 14 and 23. Lane trying to throw in that cradle. He's long-armed and long-legged for the weight class, and the cradle's been one of his biggest weapons. Hard cross face here, trying to drive the head down into that left knee. 
Felt does a good job of avoiding it so far. They're right in the center of the mat. Lane now reaching in. Has the hands hooked. Stands, leans back, and has Felt on his back. Lane with a big cradle in. Felt kicking away. Lane's got his back points for sure. Now the question is, can he pin him? Nope, Felt kicks out. Three points near fall. Lane reaching over the top for a near side this time. Throws in the cross face. Coaching staff telling him to work up the body. Cross face in on the right. Leg lace and a grapevine over the right leg. And they're off the edge and back to the center. 40 seconds left in the first. Ethan Lane with an early 5-0 lead here. Road crew up 31-9, a top overall seed. Williams lost one dual meet all year. Looks like they're going to advance to the final. The question is, will it be the Prowlers that will join them? That would be a matchup everybody thought would happen at the beginning of the season. Another point for the Prowlers here. Didn't catch it on Sportsmanlike. Oh, headbutt. So a penalty point for one and a six to nothing lead for Ethan Lane. 27 seconds left here in the period. And now a caution on Ethan for moving too quick. Felt tries to stand. Lane breaks him down, throws in that half. Felt stands again, Lane breaks him down to the mat again, and they're off the edge. And they'll reset here. Down to the final 13 seconds of period number one, Ethan Lane has built a six nothing margin. We're at 145 pounds, this is the halfway point of the match. Felt back to his base, two seconds, one, period is over. Ethan Lane leads after one. Well, they start their second period on the feet. Ethan Lane gives up a takedown to Felt, so he leaves it 6-2, and then Felt with another illegal move and potentially dangerous. And now Felt trying to throw in the cradle. Now Lane back to his feet. Felt sets in the hips, lifts, and takes him back to the mat. And we'll reset it again. And for anybody watching at home who doesn't know, the reason that one wasn't illegal is he took him to the side where earlier the Prowler threw him right over his head in a, what would used to be known as a German suplex. Lane down on the mat right now, trying to get back to his base here. Felt breaking him down with one minute left in period number two. Ethan, who built that 6 nothing lead after one, leads it 6-2 here. Felt trying to throw in a half on the right-hand side. Lane looking to peel it off, hard arm bar on the left to go with it. But Felt has cranked on that arm once already, so the referee's going to watch it close. Lane now back to his base, stands, and gets the escape. Ethan now leads it 7-2. He shoots in again on a single left side. Felt trying to stuff the head. Lane has a good lock on that left leg and takes him to the mat for two more. Ethan with a 9-2 lead here with 25 seconds left. They're right in front of the Yellow Jacket bench. Working over the edge here. And off the edge in a stalling warning called on the perm wrestler for inaction. action. 
Lane will ride right side with a waist strap in from the left. One of the few times we've seen a prowler do that. Lane breaks him down to his belly. Felt again just kind of laying there, not doing much. Lane trying to put in the wrist. Two seconds, one. Ethan will lead it 9 2. After two periods of wrestling, we go to the third here. Lane has choice and chooses top. Hundred and fifty two pounds next. That's where Griffin Lundeen lives. And a caution now. On lane for too quickly moving. They'll reset again. Lane trying to get a tilt in here and get some back points. And Caden Felton, or Felt rather, trying to work his way out. Lane two on one over the right hip, and we'll get a stalemate here. We expect Blake Lorenz at 152 for Perham. That would put together a heck of a matchup at 152 pounds. Lane trying to collapse the cradle again. Couldn't get it done. A minute and 25 left. As one more time, Felt bellies out. I don't see Felt doing anything but laying there. He's already been stalled for warned for stalling once. He's making no concerted effort to get out. Now trying to stand and post the leg just a little bit. Looking to roll his way through and makes it work for a two-point reversal, I believe. Nope. Lane still has the leg. Now there's the two-point reversal. And there's potentially dangerous again. There's a reversal there for two, makes it 9-4. One minute left to wrestle here. And the referee having some words with uh, Caden Felt as he's been warned a couple of times for potentially dangerous moves. Lane looking to stand. Felt waist wrap in on the right, now trying to throw in a hard half on the right and stuff the head and turn Ethan over. Down to 45 seconds left as Lane looked to come out the back door here, sliding his way out underneath the hips. Reaches for a leg. Felt turns back in, does still have control. Lane has two on one on the one on the right leg, now switches to the left. Ethan looking to trip. Stands in, Felt falling back on top of him again. And again, stuff in the head. Ethan looked like he was going to get the reversal and then just didn't complete the move. Now Felt gets away and gives up the escape to Ethan. It makes it 10-2, or 10-4, excuse me. Felt shoots. Lane traps him and gets the back points to go with it. Lane trying for a late fall here. Six seconds left of the period. Trying to power that right shoulder down. Good job by Felt to bridge out of it. Three more near fall for Ethan Lane and a big win. Lane will win it 15 to four and pick up the bonus point for the Prowlers who lead it now 22 to nine as we'll go to Griffin Lundeen next, back in a moment. Will they throw out Lawrence again, Griff, for a good match? Well, they can't, they've been bumping kids up, so I, that's why I wasn't sure. Well, here's the matchup we thought might happen. Blake Lorenz, the senior at 34 and 11 for Perham. And for the Prowlers, Griffin Lundeen. Griffin is 42 and 2. Lorenz had the underhook in, had Lundeen lifted, but couldn't finish it. Lundeen working wrist control on a right wrist here. Both men are forehead to forehead. This was what we thought would be the matchup of the evening in this duel. These are two of the top kids in the state at this weight class. Lawrence down to one knee, trying to change levels. Lundin in on a collar tie on the left, tried to snap down. Lawrence steps away. Lorenz and Lundin. They circle again, both paw at the head a little bit. The first minute is virtually gone here in the first period. Nobody has scored. 
A whole lot of cameras trained on this one, I'll tell you. Both men working for advantage again. Lawrence trying to work on the wrist, and they'll call a stalemate. 53 seconds left in the period. Lundin looked for an initial shot off the whistle, now works in a collar tie on the left-hand side. Both men again, forehead to forehead. Lundin quickly looked for an arm drag. That wasn't there. Now Lorenz shoots. Lundin counters, stuffs ahead, looked for the underhook, but it wasn't there. Now Lundin shoots, has a double in, and gets two for the takedown. Lundin with a two-point takedown. Lorenz now sprawled out on the mat. Arm bar left side here for Griffin. Ankle grapevine over the left leg. Ten seconds left in a first. Lundin trying to walk him across two on one on that left shoulder. Couldn't get it done. Has to reset. Three seconds, two one. Griffin Lundin will lead two nothing after the first period at 152 pounds. Griffin has choice and defers. And Lorenz chooses both men on their feet. So Lundin deferred. Lorenz said neutral, both been on their feet, and now the referee having a conversation with our scorer's table. Conversation has concluded, and we're underway in period number two at 152. Pequot Lakes, Pine River back is leading 31 to 12 over Detroit Lakes on the other mat. The Prowlers up 22 to nine here on this one. Both men looking for head control again. They're on the far side of the mat here. Griffin shoots it on a single. Lawrence sprawls. Now trying to get a hold of Lundin's leg. Lundin plants his feet, lifts, and takes Lawrence to the mat. Trying to step over the legs here. Nobody has control yet. We see stalemate in this position a lot. Lundin needs to get his head out to get the takedown. Lorenz trying to set in a body cradle here. Now Griffin gets his head out for the two and a takedown and a 4 nothing lead. Lundin now slides around behind looking for a little bit of arm bar. Using his head to power Lorenz's head to the mat. Now hard cross face from the left hand side, two on one on the right wrist. Now Lundin will switch to the left wrist. Griffin rolls that left shoulder under, wants to Little somersault his way through, but you got to be careful in that because you can defensively pin yourself doing it. Griffin trying to roll Lorenz through, and Lorenz heavy on the hips and being warned for stalling. Griffin does roll him through now and has the back points. Lundin scoring back points on Blake Lorenz. He's got at least two. Still has the wrist, so he hasn't been given the points yet. There's two points near fall. Down to the final 10 seconds of the second period. Griffin Lundin has built a 6-0 lead. They'll work near the edge of the mat. Two seconds, one. We're through two periods at 152 with Griffin Lundin leading it 6 to nothing here on 1460 Real Country. Well, each man has scored here in the first minute of the third. An escape by Lorenz, and now a takedown again by Lundin, and he has an 8-1 to lead. Another score on our in-game scoreboard update, courtesy of the folks at the Pizza Hut. Don't forget, for carryout and delivery are available at the Pizza Hut as well as dine-in. 
You can get a great pizza, pasta, and Wing Street Wings. Call 681-1306 and place your order and head for the hut. Final in now from New Folden. Northern Freeze defeat Red Lake County 65-41. Lorenz trying to stand with 45 seconds left. Lundin on the head. Now we'll give the escape and release him. Lorenz shoots in here. Lundin underhooks. Just about powered Lorenz right through his back. And Lorenz scrambled out of it and got back to his feet. Now Griffin trying for a little headlock. Lorenz steps back away from that. Under 30 seconds remain. And a steal made here. Both men clash heads a little bit. And a stalling warning again on Lorenz and a point for Lundin on the stalling. He leads it 9-2. A takedown here would give him a major decision for the Prowlers on an extra point. Down to the final seven seconds. Down to the final four seconds. Griffin has to go. If he's going to get it, he shoots for the single. It's not there. Two tenths of a second left. Oh, the referees called it good. It's over. 9-2 in favor of Griffin Lundin. He'll pick up another three for the Prowlers. Who lead it 25 to nine, 160 pounds. Coming next on 1460 Real Country. The senior Cody Ween in here for the Prowlers. Cody on the year is 29 and four. And we wait for the announcements here. Prowlers leading it 25 to nine in the team score on the Pizza Hut scoreboard. And they're off the edge. Believe that's Braylon Rock at 21 and 14. Rock, the sophomore. And they're near the edge again. Rock reaching for a single and they'll go off the edge. Both men step back off the whistle. Weenan shoots on a single. Rock sprawls. Now back to their feet again. Weenan has a headlock in. Has the arm with it. Snaps the head down. Tries to shuck him behind. It's a scramble. Weenan in on a single. And gets two for the takedown. Nice counter wrestling by both men. That ended up with a takedown for Weenan. And we'll reset. Weenan looking for waist control from the right. Rock stands. 30 seconds left. Weenan lifts. Rock gets back to his feet. Weenan lifts again. And then Rock steps away for the escape. It's 2 1. Weenan leads 2 1 here. 20 seconds left, first period. Cody looking for his 30th win of the season for the senior. Rock shoots. Weenan sprawls here. Underhook on the left-hand side. Waist trap in. 12 seconds left. They step back up. Two seconds, one. And that'll end your first period. Cody Weenan leading it 2-1. Weenan up 2-1. The road crew now up 37 to 15. And has it locked up, they will advance. Weenan starts the down position here, stands, and Rock releases him. It's a 3-1 lead for Weenan. Rock pawing at the head here. Now Weenan in on the head, collar tie from the left-hand side. Rock shoots on a single, very quick. Weenan stands to avoid the takedown at least momentarily. Now Rock lifts. Weenan trying to separate the hands, turns back in on him. 
Rock with a trip and two for the takedown, and we're tied at three. Three all our score here. Weenan back to his feet again, trying to step around and face him, does. Somehow the official says Rock still has control, and I'm not sure how Weenan's got the head. There's the escape for one. I understand there was no separation, but I don't understand how Rock still has control when he had no part of Weenan's body. Now Weenan shoots in here, lifts, and has a takedown. Weenan with a big takedown for two here. Down to the final 50 seconds of period number two. Cody Weenan has built a 6-3 lead. At 160 pounds, the Prowlers lead it 25 to nine. Wean it, trying to work an arm bar on that left hand side, 30 seconds left in the period. Wean it over the left hip. Now steps over to the right hand side. Wean has always been a very good counter wrestler. And reads what you're going to do and then moves from there. Now working grapevine on the right. Final 12 seconds left. Weena with a hard arm bar in here. Trying to turn Rock over. Belly's Rock back out as Rock gets to a base. Five seconds left in the period. Cody Weenan's going to lead it 25 to 9 after two periods here at 160 pounds. In case you just joined us, we're in Detroit Lakes. Thief River Falls Prowlers wrestling in the semifinals of the eight two-way section tournament. And now blood time here. A blood time stoppage here. Want to make sure to thank all of our sponsors. There will be a brief break between matches. Road crew now with two matches left leads it 43 to 15. So even if they lost the final two matches by pinfall and they won't, the best it could be is 43-27. So it'll be Pequot Lakes Pine River back as, as expected in the final. And the Prowlers are getting close, but hasn't have, do not have it officially locked up yet. Rock down. Weenan rides left side. Rock stands. Turns back in, but Weenan still has an ankle, and they're off. Rock trying to sit back into Weenan. Weenan traps that left hip. Now Rock stands and an escape. Now Weenan trying to do the same thing. Shoots in and now trying to come out the back door underneath on Rock. Rock hanging on to Weenan's ankle. And two points take down for Weenan. 55 to 15. Pequot Lakes Pine River Backus will, adma- will advance in their matchup. Over to Detroit Lakes. Weenan breaking rock down, has chicken wing in on that left hand side, trying to step over that. They'll stand again. is our score in the team matchup. Cody Weenan leading it 8-5 now as he gives up yet another escape to Rock. Weenan and Rock stalking one another here. Rock shoots in. Weenan sprawls back. 35 seconds left in this matchup at 160. They paw at the head again. Weenan now on a collar tie. Rock shoots in in a single. Rock looking to lift under the right hip of Weenan. Weenan counters and trips him down. Nobody has control yet. Rock hanging on for dear life to Weenan's right leg. Weenan trying to get him exposed. No takedown has been given here for either man. 13 seconds left. 
Now Weenan has the back exposed. Has two points takedown and back points. Weenan looking for the pinfall. Squeezes. Squeezes some more. And did not get it, but he gets three near fall. And a major decision, winning at 13 to five. Another four points for the Prowlers, who take a 29 to nine lead. Demon Ferguson coming next at 170. Is this Hames? They pace here. Damon Ferguson up for the Prowlers. I don't know what's going on at the table. In on the head. Ferguson walks straight back, has a quick takedown. Oh, it's Brady Kasprick. They got him in the match. Brady Kasprick, the defending state champion at 11 and 1. Hugus Hames. Hames, the senior, at 11 and 16. Kasprick is 11 and 1. Hasn't gotten to compete much, had a shoulder problem most of the year. Got cleared on Thursday to wrestle here. And couldn't wrestle his normal weight class because of uh, a glitch in the rules, is the only way I know to describe it. So now leads it 6 2. Now make it 6-3 as he's gotten three takedowns. And there's another takedown. So what Brady does best. Now he's got his man in the cradle. Got him rolled across for two points near fall. And now releases for a 10-4 lead. And blood time. Gee, imagine that. A Brady Casper match with blood time. I wonder in his high school career how many times that's happened. More than I could count on both hands, I guarantee you that. I'm not sure I couldn't count it needing to use somebody else's feet and toes, too, because I bet it would be across my hands and feet and then some. Prowlers with a 29-9 to lead in the team match. Perm coach is over talking to... To Brady's dad here. Yep, you had to get him on the mat, didn't you? <laughs> I could hear that conversation right now. Well, what you could see happen then for the Prowlers is Ferguson bump up to 82, DeHate bump up to 95, and then see uh, Jolson, Sargent, and uh, Cullen Brueggemann to end it out. That could very easily happen here. Because I know that uh, Carter Engerbrenson has been nursing his shoulder a little bit. And I'm sure if they could uh, save him for a match, they probably would. Brady, the defending state champion at 145 pounds. And oh yeah, he could make that weight today. But uh, was not allowed to weigh in at that weight because of a glitch evidently in the rules. The only way I can describe it. He was one way in short at that weight class of qualifying for the tournament. Would have had it had the Prowlers wrestled with BGMR last week. That one got weathered out. Prowlers called the high school league and said, what do we do? No fault of Brady's, no fault of anybody else's. What do we do here? Yeah, I have 10-4. And now they've got it straightened out. Anyway... The high school league said, we'll go ahead and certify a weigh-in. You can do that with, with your activities director. So they did send it into the high school league, and the high school league said, no, that's not legal. After they were told to do it that way, which is what makes no sense. Kasprick underhook on the right-hand side here. Hames trying to push on him. 
Hames is a natural 170 pounder. Casper giving up some weight here, but it doesn't matter as he ducks in and gets two more. He leads it 12 4. Kasprick on now in a scramble, trying to control the legs here with four seconds left in the period. Well, we're one period in, and Brady's already in major decision territory. The question is, what can he do from here with two periods left? Hames chooses down position here to start the second period, knowing that he needs points, but boy, that's going to be a scramble. I think he's counting on the fact that he's got some weight on Brady and can get out. Sits out. And Brady traps the left side. Waist wrap in here and back points again as Hames kicks his way through it. Two more near fall. And 14-4 and here's more blood. Well, it's dry, it's cold. All of that. I'm trying to come up with all the good reasons. <laughs> As they'll clean up the mat and clean up the opponent once again. Pequot Lakes, Pine River, Bacchus has advanced, defeating Detroit Lakes 55-15. to They are now 28-1 and this year in duels. But here's the kicker on it. In the guillotine rankings, or flow wrestling rankings, whichever ones you look at, the last time I checked in Pequot Lakes, Pine River Backers was only one ahead of the Prowlers. I think they were eight and nine in the last team dual rankings. Now they might be up to five, but, e but even at that, with one loss on a year, you'd have thought they'd have gotten a little more respect than that in the state. A minute and a half left in period number two at 170. Kasprick, waist wrap in, has a two-on-one on Hames' right wrist and has his back exposed again. Tough pinning combination from there, but he's going to score back points. Three more. 17-4 to four already. And Brady throws in the half here. Well, here's the thing. It's pin him or it's over because he's in technical fall period right now. Deep half in, powers the shoulders over. Hames trying to kick out of it. Brady trying to bridge over the shoulders and gets it. A fall for Brady Kasprick. Thirty-five to nine, the Prowlers lead, and now they've got it locked up because the most they can give up is thirty-three, and that's if they get swept out. Here's a change here for the Prowlers. Riley Poisson going to come out. And he'll draw a tough one. Riley, the sophomore, at 6-14 and 14 against Ramos, who is probably the best wrestler for the Yellow Jackets this year. Brian Ramos, the senior, is 39-1. 2-1 our score. Ramos with a takedown. Poisson with an escape, but now two more. As Ramos gets another takedown. And we do it again. Already it's 6-3, now 8-3. And now one more for 8-4. Two more takedown. And another escape, 10-5. Ramos in again on the head. This time he'll catch the head and puts Poisson on his back. And gets the fall. Ramos with the fall, 35 to 15. Prowlers lead it. 195 pound weight class is next. Here's to eight for the Prowlers. Ball to eight, two and two for the senior. Here at 195, and would imagine this is Hudson Hackle. And now the rest of 195 for the Yellow Jackets, Hudson Hackle. Hackle, the, the sophomore of 19 and 8. Bo 
Both men worked ahead. The heat giving up a little weight here. He's normally a 182 pounder, wrestling at 95. Hackle is a 95 pounder. And they'll go off the edge in front of the perm bench. Shoots in the single, does Hackle. The Heat has a standing wizard in. Hackle trips and gets the two. Two point takedown for Hackle. The Heat rolls his way through it and catches the head in doing so and has Hackle on his back. The Heat deep reverse half in, trying to drive the shoulders down, has their left shoulder down, trying to pull that right shoulder down as well. It's close. Hackle rolls his way out of it. Prowler fans thought he had it. Referee says no, three points near fall. Big five point counter move for DeHate, who now leads it 5 2. DeHate looking arm bar and lever on the left hand side here. Trying to drive that arm forward, putting his head underneath the armpit, then wraps the head, the arm over his head, and lifts to try and turn Hackle over, and Hackle posting on that right wrist. That hurts, folks, trust me. It's painful especially if you haven't stretched out your shoulders the right way. Final 12 seconds. Now two on one on the left wrist. The Heat throwing the half in again. Hackle trying to counter and roll through it. Gets the reversal. And then DeHeat gets it back again. Two and two. So if my count is right after one, it's 7-4 in favor of DeHeat. As they roll through. Two more weight classes after this, then about a 20 or 25 minute break, and then the championship match between the Prowlers and the road crew of Pequot Lakes, Pine River Backus. All you can hope here is that Pequot Lakes is standing around tightening up in the cool air. Because they are the heavy favorite. The hate two on one on the left hand side. They beat the Prowlers by 16 or 19 earlier this year. Hackle trying to stand, DeHeat working over that left-hand side. Hackle sits into an inside roll, but DeHeat traps him on that left shoulder. A minute and a half left in the second here at 195 pounds. DeHeat has that chicken wing in on the left. Hackle trying to hold on to that left wrist. Keep it tight to his body and manages to break the hold of DeHeat. Wrist control again. Waist wrap from the right. Now the hate works over the right hand side. Hackle sits. The hate pulls him back in. And they're off the edge and back to the center. A minute and two left. Here in period number two. Hackle to the down possession. The hate will ride on the left hand side with a waist wrap in from the right. Sits in, reaching for the switch. The hate traps him. At the waist. Hackle shoots for the switch again. DeHate traps that left arm. Hackle powers that switch through. DeHate still in control, re-switches. Switch and re-switch. And there's the reversal for Hackle. 7-6, DeHate leads. And they'll reset with the heat down here. 37 seconds left in period number two. The heat looks to stand. Hackle, heavy over the hips. Little ankle wrap and grapevine in over the left leg. 23 seconds left in the period. to stand. Down to 12 seconds to eight, trying to free himself and get to his base. Hackle controlling the wrist. Hackle still riding over that wrist. The heat tried to roll his way out of it, almost got trapped by Hackle, but no points yet and there won't be. 7-6 to heat leads after two as we go to the third here at 195. The heat has choice and says, I'll take the down position.
and Hackle allows him to release. So the allowed escape makes it 8-6 to Heat. They circle in the middle. Both paw at the head. Hackle is longer than DeHate, has a leverage advantage that way. Hackle pawing at the head on the right-hand side. Now both look for elbow control. Now Hackle has a collar tie on the left. Underhook on the right-hand side for Hackle, overhook for DeHate. DeHate looking to shoot, it's not there. Hackle throws in a headlock. DeHate trying to roll him through it, cannot, got caught. Giving up the two and more. It's 8-8 eight, eight plus the back points here. Hackle's going to take the lead. Down to 109 left. And to hate in trouble again and gets the fall for Hackle. Well, back-to-back -back falls for Perham makes it 35-21 with 220 and heavyweight left. And again, remember, to hate giving up some weight at 195 pounds, about 15 pounds worth. Here comes the Goodridge Gorilla for the Prowlers. Jolson Sargent to the mat. The senior is 33 and 11. And for the Yellow Jackets, it's Jackson Vetch, the sophomore. Vetch, by the way. The 10th grader is 18 and 15. Underhook here by Sargent. On the left hand, or on the right hand side rather. Trying to step in for the body lock. He's got it. This is what he likes. He'll look for the throw or the lateral drop from here. Now Vetch has a double underhook in as well. And both middles separate and reset. Ah, Vetch probably a good head taller than Jackson or than Jolson, but that's not unusual. <laughs> Jolson's used to that. It's been his way his whole career, whole career. Sergeant reaching again. Body wrapping an underhook in on the left. Now throws it around to the right hand side, and they'll go off the edge in front of the prowler bench. A minute and three left in the first period here at 220. They roll through. Jolson gets caught here. But rolls all the way through it. They're going to have to watch that left arm. Two points take down, two points near fall for Vetch. Back to his base now. Jolson trying to get up and get away and does. So he scores before the period is over and makes it 4-1. Now, if he get a takedown here and cut it to a one-point match, it'd really be interesting going forward. Jackson looking for that underhook again, has the right side in. Trying to pummel his way in on the left, but Vetch hanging onto his hand. So, Jolson shoots for the takedown on two, does. Does not get the back points, but gets a two-point takedown. And trails it 4-3 after one. So accomplished what he wanted, which was to close the gap before the period was over. Sergeant will start the second in the down position. Jolson turns in quickly and stands. There's the escape. And we're tied at four. Underhook again on the right-hand side for Jolson. Vetch again trying for wrist control on the opposite, on, on Jolson's right hand to try and keep him getting that second underhook in, and here's your stalemate. 4-4 four, four our score. Heavyweight and final matchup of this duel still to come. The Prowlers know they're going to advance and take on Pequot Lakes Pine River back as the only question is your final team score. Underhook in here. Looking for the head snap. Ducks under again. And Vetch caught him in a little lateral drop. That's normally Jolson's move, but Jackson Vetch caught him. 
Jackson Cedar Jolson's in trouble here, bridging right in the center of the mat. Vetch has it in deep. And there's the fall, big one. Three consecutive falls for the Purim Yellow Jackets have closed the gap here. Making it 35-27. And heavyweight still to come. Weiss Wilbrecht. And Jackson Ingram. Wilbrecht, the senior, is 15 and 10. Jackson Ingram for the Prowlers. On the year, Jackson is eight and seven for the junior. Ingram looking for the underhook here. Ingram has his move, but they'll go off the edge before he can complete it. Prowlers will advance. The only question is the final team score. And the Prowlers have shuffled their lineup to protect a couple of kids here in the upper weights for the matchup against Pequot Lakes. 35-27. Ingram trying to finish it out here in the heavyweight match. Now the winner of our next matchup will advance to the state tournament and we're gonna be well late folks. We thought about 7.30 for the championship match. It's already 10 minutes to eight. So we'll probably be closer to 8.15, 8.20 before we start. And what we thought would be a halfway early night's not gonna be. Well, they did kind of drag their feet here getting started tonight. It was almost 6.20 before we took the first match. Wilprecht driving forward. Does not get the takedown as Ingram counters his way out of it. Wilprecht now in on the head, trying to throw it by and gets the two for the takedown. Now trying to turn Ingram over, does Jackson trying to roll through it. Wilprecht has him trapped here and gets a fall. So four consecutive falls to finish it for the Purim Yellow Jackets, but it doesn't matter, Thief River Falls will advance. 35-33, post-match coverage coming up on Thief River Falls Radio Sports in just a moment as the Prowlers will advance to the section final. Our intermission report brought to you by the folks at Jay Swanson Insurance. A check of the stats coming up after this from the Jay Swanson Agency.
Today it's Super Saturday in New Folden. Roseau, or rather, Sacred Heart beats uh, Roseau 73-34. It was uh, Kitsap County Central, a one-point winner over Clearbrook Gonvick, 45-44. Goodridge Grigla beats Stephen Argyle, 89-82. It was Warren Everett Lossel over Badger Greenwich Middle River, 61-54. And Northern Freeze defeat Red Lake County, 65-41. Those are the scores that we have in this evening. Prowler hockey team will open up their play in the state tournament series next week. As they will be the top seeds headed in, or the number two seed headed in, behind top seeded War Road, the Prowler girls hockey team saw their season come to an end just a night ago. Coin toss here. We'll rotate three referees for this one. A primary, a secondary, and then a third referee that will rotate in periodically for this matchup. Getting ready to get things underway here in this one. Keys to the matchup for the Prowlers, pretty simple. They have got to win some of those toss-up matches early and get some momentum going into the heart of their lineup where their big horses are if they're going to have a chance to beat a very good Pequot Lakes Pine River Bacchus team. The road crew have been the favorite in this section since the end of the year last year when they claimed the section championship and had everybody back from last year's lineup, didn't lose a wrestler. We we're kind of hoping maybe they'd bunch up in some weight classes, somehow they didn't. And a good weight management by them, let's give them credit for that. But they are the heavy favorite to win the whole thing. Our start of our contest tonight brought to you by Greg Hansen Sales and Hansen Trucking. In Carlstead, Greg Hansen Trucking is always looking for over the road drivers, great pay, and home when you want to be. Hansen Sales is your certified Cummins diesel repair shop with a full selection of parts in stock. From engine overhauls to tire replacement and everything in between, it's Hanson Sales. Maverick Iverson will come out first for the Prowlers. Here in this one. Maverick is now 30 and 13. And Parker Zenner, the eighth grader at 38 and two. So an eighth grader and a ninth grader here to start things off. And again, Zenner is 38 and two. We have an early stalemate call. Zenner in on the head, underhooks from the right-hand side. Driving Maverick toward the prowler bench. Now they'll circle. Maverick looking to Get a little momentum here on a duck under, and they'll go off the edge and back to the center. Zenner underhooks the left arm. Maverick shoots. Zenner trying to circle. Maverick still has the leg. And potentially dangerous for the bend of the knee. That'll get a stoppage, and both men back to their feet again. 110 left here in the first period at 106 pounds. Zenner shoots on a double. Maverick looking for the underhook, but got caught. Two points, Zenner for the takedown. Zenner, the two point takedown. Has a 2 0 lead here in the first. Zenner trying to work two on one wrist control. Iverson trying to get to his base here. Zenner trying to throw in that half. They're on the far side of the mat, right in front of us. The mat lights here are nice, but I wish they'd stop going up and down. Just stay in one position and leave it there. And off the edge again. Every time the ads on their electronic scoreboard change, it gets darker and lighter in here. Iverson tried to step out of it. Zenner caught him and now getting back points. Three points near fall for Zenner. And a 5 0 lead. 5 0 here. At the end of the first period. One period of the books. Iverson has choice. He defers. 
and Zenner chooses neutral. Zenner shoots, Iverson checks the head. Now trying to stuff the head and move behind for two. Iverson with a good headlock in here. A little bit of a waist wrap in by Zenner and that'll earn the stalemate. They'll start again, Zenner quickly in on the head. Little single attempt, now double underhook for Zenner. Zenner has the body lock. Looking for the throw here at 103 pounds. And another stalemate. As nobody gains an advantage. 115 left in period number two, still five nothing Zenner on the strength of the takedown and the back points in the first. Iverson shoots on a single, Zenner counters and gets a takedown. Iverson in on the single and Zenner just kind of bull rushed him. Iverson in the down position now, one minute and one second left here in period two. Iverson trying to break down the hands and get to his feet. Zenner instead breaks him down to his belly and works on a chicken wing on the left hand side. Zenner trying to step across, has a grapevine over the right hip. Now throws in a power half on the left side. Trying to turn Iverson over here. Maverick trying to counter it. Zenner reaches for the cradle but can't get that. 30 seconds left here in period number two. Zenner up 7 0. Zenner trying to get. Iverson rolled over. Iverson trying to step over it and get the reversal out of the deal. Now Maverick to his feet, but Zenner throws in a standing headlock. Off the half Nelson. Now Iverson to his feet again. Has a leg, but they'll go off the edge. A pair of 30 win wrestlers. Iverson at 30 and 13, and Zenner at 38 and 2. Here at 106. And a second caution now on Zenner for placement of his head in the right. Iverson looks to stand, Zenner traps, trying to throw in the half. Iverson to his base again, down to three seconds, two. It's gonna be seven nothing Zenner after two. Seven nothing Zenner after two here. Maverick says, I'll take the top. Prowlers need some wins in these early weights. If they're going to hold their own here against a very good Pequot Lakes team. Zenner tries to stand. Iverson breaks him down. Stuffs the head here. Throws in a half. But Zenner turns back in on it and gets a hold of the leg. Zenner will counter his way out and gets two for the reversal. Nice counter wrestling by Zenner. Now he'll release Maverick for a nine to one lead. Although they haven't put the point on the board yet, it is nine one. Now it went up. Now Iverson trying to bridge his way out of it here. Zenner in on the head again. Potentially dangerous as Iverson, or as a brother Zenner across the throat of Iverson. Both men on their feet, Maverick down eight to one. Iverson gets his underhooks in, but can't get the body lock yet. Now has the body lock, trying to shake him down. Zenner throws in a headlock, puts Maverick right on his back. Take down for two and more for Zenner. Maverick trying to bridge his way off the edge here. He's in trouble. 45 seconds left, and there's a fall. A big fall for Parker Zenner and a 6-0 lead. 
for Pequot Lakes Pine River Backers, 113 pound weight class coming up on 1460. Nick Spear for the Prowlers. Road crew. Easton Miller. And Miller quickly with a takedown. Miller the junior at 19 and 5. And Spear, the sophomore at 11 and 5. Spear trying to stand here. Miller trying to force in the head and see if he can't hook up a cradle. Spear in, turns into him, and gets the escape. Here, Miller works his way out the back. Spear hanging onto a toe, but can't control. Another takedown for Miller. And a 4-1 lead. Pequot Lakes, Pine River, Bacchus. Literally has been the favorite since last year when they won the section title to win it again. And they lead it 4 0 early, or 6 0 early on a pinfall. Miller up 4 1 here. Spear on the mat, trying to get to his base. Miller working chicken wing right side. Still working on that wing. Trying to walk him over and has fear in trouble and a fall. Fall was a little quick, but it's a quick fall for the road crew who get falls back to back to start it off. Not the start the Prowlers needed. They're down 12 0 early. Here comes 120 pounds. Expect Noah Jacobson. Jacobson, the ninth grader. 19 and 13. And for the road crew, Tayton Mech. Mech, the sophomore, is 9 and 11. Mech shoots on a single. Jacobson shucks him off, and the two men work back to the middle. Jacobson in on the head here. Mick tries to shoot. Jacobson has the headlock. They roll through, and Jacobson catches him and throws him to his back. Noah looking at it here. Mick trying to bridge, and there's a fall. A big fall for the Prowlers. Jacobson with a fall, puts six on the board. It's 12-6. 126 pound weight class is next as we're going quickly. We expect Keegan Hermanson here. Hermanson, the eighth grader, is 17 and 20. Caleb Rule. Rule, the senior, is 30 and 12. Road crew do have a number of seniors in their lineup. Rule gets the takedown. Did he get the back points or no? He gets the two point takedown, but that is all. They haven't put it on the board yet, but it's got to be a takedown. He's got riding here. So two points for the takedown. And now it's big cradle here, and Keegan's in trouble. Cradle for Rule. 
looking for his 31st win or 32nd win of the year as he won earlier tonight. Squeezing in here. And a fault. So our first four finishes have been falls. And it's 18-6 in favor of the road crew. 132 pounds up next. And we would expect the senior, Owen Carlson. And it's Eli Wolebski. Wolebski for the Prowlers, the ninth grader here against the senior. Eli two and five on here. Quickly taken down and thrown into a cradle. They roll through twice. And this time he's in trouble. And another quick fall. Twenty-four to six, our score in favor of the road crew, and this one's going quickly. Here's 138 pounds now. Should be Kale Geyser for the Prowlers. The junior. Kale on the ears, 36 and eight. And we wait to see who the road crew brings out here. I would believe it's Carson Kenyon. No, they send out Brady Rule. Brady Rule, the sophomore, is 18 and 9. Guys are quickly stepping ahead here. Prowlers down 24 to six early to a very good road crew team, and now they have a stoppage here for a stalemate. Underhook in by Geyser on the right. Trying to pummel his way in on the left. They dance. Work the near the near side of the mat. Geyser shoots on a single and Rule steps away. And they'll go off the mat again. Guys are trying to time it because this official's been quick on the whistle and they said, nope, too quick. Now guys are in on a single here. Converts it to an arm drag. Under a minute to wrestle here in the first period. Neither man has scored. Prowler's down 24 to six. Noah Jacobson's win by fall, the only win so far and another stalemate. Geyser pause at the head, changes levels. Pause at the head, changes levels again and now under hooks. Trying to stuff the head here, reaching for the hip. Guys are trying to spin his way around behind. Has the ankle. They continue to circle. And guys says, okay, you want to go that way? I'll shuck the head that way. But they're near the edge right in front of the road crew bench again. Down to the final four seconds of the period. We're not going to have any scoring here in the first at 138. Back in a moment.
Well, we start the second period. Geyser gets to his feet a couple of times. And Geyser finally gets to wait for the escape. After a stalling warning on rule. Now Geyser trying to control the hit here, and we have a stalemate call. Back of their feet, Geyser works in on the head again. A minute and 10 left in the second period. Kale trying to go heavy on the head here and toss Rule by for the takedown. Has the inside ankle. Now down to a minute and both on their feet again. Geyser and Rule, Geyser underhooks. Steps in for the trip. Rule tried to duck under it, now ends up on the bottom. Geyser has stuffed the head. Kale with an inside hip. And another stalemate. Not sure who this referee is, but he calls stalemates awful quick. He doesn't give guys a chance to work. And again, guys are trying to go quickly here. Kale trying a little deception, dropping his right hand down, trying to get Rule to look at it, but Rule does not. Now Geyser has underhook on Rule's right side. Rule tried to shoot in a single, maybe converting to a fireman's. Geyser has stuffed the head here, trying to work his way behind. They spin again. Geyser still stuffing the head. Now he goes back the opposite direction. And Rule traps the right leg again. Geyser has the ankle. And the period comes to an end. So Kale guys are a one nothing lead after two periods here, back with the third in a moment. Guys are on the top here in a period, working a chicken wing on the left-hand side. Trying to go arm bar on the right to go with it, see if he can't get rule turned. And they're back to their base again. Now rule to his feet, but Geyser will take him back to the mat. Geyser leading at one nothing with 1.15 left to wrestle here in period number three at 138 pounds. Rule trying to get to his feet. Geyser, Geyser traps a leg again. Now Rule shoots in, or sits in, and the official has given him the escape. Geyser still has the head, but the official has recorded, rewarded the escape and made it 1-1. Guys are with the underhook here, and now they're off the, the side. One-one with 45 seconds left here at period number three, at 138 pounds. Guys are that underhook again. Neither man has a takedown. Each man has an escape. That's all the scoring there's been in this matchup. Guys are not trying to pull him forward. And trap the hit. Going to get a stalemate coming up here quick with this referee. Down to 19 seconds left. Guys are trying to work his way around behind. All Rule's doing is spin it. Now Geyser has worked his way behind, but does not have the leg free yet. Rule just hanging on to that leg. Prowlers won a stalling ball. Won't get it. One second. No points. We're going to overtime. So 1-1 one, one and going to overtime.
Back on their feet, one minute here. Somebody gets a takedown, it's over. Nobody's gotten one so far in the match. Rule shoots, Geyser traps ahead again. Geyser has a chin. Trying to reach in for inside right wrist. And work his way behind and another stalemate call. Might set a record for stalemate calls in this match. Rule shoots, Geyser counters, stuffs ahead and gets two for the takedown and the win. So Geyser with the takedown will win it 3-1. And pick up three for the Prowlers. They trail it 24 to nine as we move to 145 pounds next on 1460 Real Country. Ethan Lane coming out for the Prowlers here. Lane for the Prowlers here. He shoots in on a single, lifts. No points given yet. Lane working for that two and now has it. Ethan on the year at 25 and 18. For the sophomore. Lane trying to stack the hips here. Carson Kenyon. Up a weight class here at 20 and 9. For the senior, the Kenyon twins. Lane up 2 nothing. Here with 35 seconds left in period number one. Is it Corey Kenyon? Kenyon stands, Lane in the head. Kenyon's a senior, Lane a sophomore. Corey Kenyon on the years 18 and 15. Lane trying to pick the ankle here. Not a lot of action for Kenyon. And that'll end the period. Discussion about points here. At the end of the period of this one, they're gonna give one to Kenyon and make it 2-1 at the end of one. So 2-1, Kenyon's choice and he'll choose down. Lane in a riding position, reaches over the right shoulder here. Kenyon trying to sit out of it. Lane trying to compress the head to the hips. Kenyon hanging on to Lane's right wrist. Lane now gets the wrist free and Kenyon grabs the right knee. Lane trying to sink in that cradle, getting awful high on his ride here. Kenyon has a knee. Ethan leading it 2-1. Kenyon trying to step into lane, lane circling. Still has control. Lane, if he can get that leg free, wants to turn Kenyon. 
Minute and 15 left to wrestle in period number two here at 145 pounds. Kenyon turns in again. Kenyon trying to stand. Lundin hanging on. And Lane continuing to hold the advantage. Down to the final 30 seconds here of the period, and there's your stalemate call. I guarantee you, if the referees had switched positions, we'd have had about two more stalemate calls in this time period. Very different styles, these two officials, on how, the, how fast they call a stalemate. Lane rides from the right-hand side, waist strap in from the left, Kenyon sits. Lane trapped on his shoulders. Has two on one on that left wrist with 19 seconds left in the period. Nearing the end of the second period, neither man has scored. It was 2-1 at the end of one. Kenyon trying to set out again. He's not going to get it done here. It's going to be 2-1 again at the end of two periods. Two periods in the books. Third period coming up at 152 pounds or 45 pounds. Lane starts the third period down with Corey Kenyon riding here. And they look to separate. I think it's Corey Kenyon. Corey and Carson, a pair of twins. And back-to-back -back weight classes. Every time we think it's Corey, I hear somebody in the Pequot Lakes crowd say, come on, Carson. So I'm not sure. Lane has split the hands here, trying to get to his base. Kenyon still hanging on to that left wrist. First 40 seconds are gone. Now Kenyon trying to power over the shoulder of Lane. And potentially dangerous coming here. And I think we might have blood too. Nope. Kenyon will ride from the right. Lane leading it 2-1. Lane posts his left leg. Trying to keep his arms away from Kenyon as Kenyon reaches underneath for the far arm again. Waist wrap in here by Kenyon. Crowther's trail at 24 to nine. They gave up four quick pins early. Kenyon working wrist control on that right arm again of Lane. Lane here. Looking for his 26th win of the year. Kenyon trying to power him over, has the wing, and finally says, to heck with it, I'm gonna let, the, let him up. So three, one, and Lane quickly in on a leg. And Kenyon's fleeing the mat. Crowther's won a stalling call or a fleeing the mat call, but aren't gonna get it here. That's all he did was hop his way off the mat. You flee the mat, it's not even stalling. That's one point. Again, Lane in on a single in Kenyon's brawl. Seven seconds, six, five. Kenyon has the head. He doesn't have time to shuck him by. Ethan Lane's going to win this one, three to one. Ethan Lane will win it, three to one. Pick up three more for the Prowlers, and it's 24-12 as Griffin Lundin comes next at 152.
Interestingly enough, here at 152 pounds, the road crew avoid what we thought would be the match of the night between Griffin Lundin, who is 43 and two, and Chase Abraham, the sophomore who is 35 and eight. They put in the other Kenyan, so it was Casey Kenyon earlier. This is Corey, the senior, at 18 and 15. Lundin has an early takedown here. Kenyon with an arm thrown over Lundin's back, and that will get, guess what, a stalemate. And they're gonna go to neutral. So he'll release him, and a 2-1 lead. Griffin in on the head again. Griffin trying to power him by, and now tries to power him over instead, and does. Should be two takedown and back points here for Lundin. Lundin with a deep reverse headlock in. I don't think he can pin Kenyon from there because the right shoulder is up. Now trying to step over the top. Kenyon's right shoulder is up on Lundin's shoulder. I don't think he can pin him from there. But it's got to be two and three. It's got to be five points because they were both on their feet. Now a chance for the pin for Lundin. Still 12 seconds left. Lundin still with a deep reverse headlock in. Kenyon trying to, Kenyon looking at his coaches. And the period will come to an end. You gotta have two and then three, it's gotta be five. Referee only singled three, it's gotta be two and then three, they were both on their feet. They show five one on the board, it should be seven one. Because there was an escape first. It's got to be 7-1, Lundin. The score on the board is wrong. Because both men were on their feet, you have to have the takedown to get the bad points. It should be 7-1. They start on their feet here in a second. Lundin picks up an ankle here. And Kenyon gives up the takedown rather than the standing cradle. 9-1, Lundin. Lundin working wrist and chicken wing control on that left arm, and now a stalling warning called. On Pequot Lakes. Lundin has a grapevine over the left leg. Reaching across to power it through here. Now trying to sink in the cradle. Can't get the hand hooked. Now powers it down again. Under a minute to wrestle in period two. They're right smack in the middle of the mat. Lundin trying to get him turned. And again, Kenyon breaks the hold. Lundin again. Grapevine over that left hip. Trying to power Kenyon over. Kenyon rolls through. Lundin catches the head. Now has him on his back and back exposed. He'll get two points near, near fall there. And an 11 to 1 lead. Yeah. 11 to 1 lead here. Down to 14 seconds left in period number two. Yeah. And that'll end the second period. Lundin with a big lead after two. Third period coming up. Well, Lundin with a quick reversal, now Kenyon an escape, but it's 13 to two. Lundin looking for his 44th victory of the year. Under hooks again. Steps in, has the body lock, and throws Kenyon to the mat and to his back. 
Take down for two. Bridgen here trying to drive the right shoulder down. Got all kinds of time. And there's the fall. A big fall for Lundin. And the Prowlers have closed the gap to 24-18. 160 pounds next on 1460 Real Country. Yep, they're bringing Brady out here. This must be that Abraham kid. Well, Brady Kasprit comes out at 160 pounds here for the Prowlers, 12 and two on the year. And Chance Abraham at 35 and eight for the road crew. Take down for Kasprit and escape for Abraham and it's 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one here, Prowlers trailing at 24-16 in the match points. Although the match scores somehow have gone off the board right now. Kasprick underhooking on the right-hand side. Now working for head control. Abraham shoots on a single. Kasprick counters and traps the hips. Steps over the right leg. Abraham trying to sit his way out of it here. Kasprick trying to counter his way through. No takedown yet. Chance Abraham. The sophomore trying to roll through as Kasprick's head trap, but Brady rolls out of it. Still no takedown given. And they're back to a neutral position. Good counter wrestling by both. Abraham has a hold of the ankle on the right side for Brady. Brady has a hold of a knee as well. Neither man has scored here. It's 2-1 after the first. Kasprick leads 2-1 after one as we get ready for the second. Kasprick has choice and defers. Abraham looking at his coaching staff says, I'll take the bottom. And Kasprick's going to release and make it 2-2. So they'll start on their feet, tied at two here in the second period. Kasprick shoots in on a single, ducks under, and gets two quickly. Nice quick move by Brady Kasprick for the takedown. And a 4-2 lead. Abraham trying to spin. Brady will release him again, making it 4-3. Forehead to forehead here, and they'll separate. Kasprick with the overhook. And they'll separate again. A minute and 20 left in period number two. And we have a blood stoppage again. Back in a moment. Brady Kasprick leading 4-3 in the second period. They'll reset here, both men on their feet. Brady Kasprick leading it 4-3 in the second period at 160 pounds. 
Kasprick reaching for the overhook. Two on one on the right arm for Abraham. Kasprick reaching for the under and trying to get the hooks in on a throw and Abraham backs away. Abraham shoots on a single. Kasprick goes heavy on the head. Underhooks the body on the left side. Wants to roll Abraham through. Abraham tries to counter it. And they'll scramble back their feet and nobody scores. 4-3 Kasprick here. 40 seconds left in period number two. Shooting for a single. Kasprick sprawls away. Pequot Lakes leads the team right now 24-18. The winner advances to the state tournament as a Section 8 representative. Kasprick heavy on the head again as Abraham shoots on a right side single. Kasprick trying to spin him by. 19 seconds left. But another stalemate going to be called. And Kasprick again has blood time. Kasprick still leading 4-3, 17 seconds left in period two. Back in a moment. Both men back the middle, 17 seconds left in period number two. Kasprick leading over Abraham by a 4-3 margin. Kasprick, the defending state champion at his weight class from a year ago. Abraham shoots on a single, Kasprick traps, and there will be no takedown. Kasprick will lead 4-3 as we go to the third here, and Kasprick has choice. Kasprick has choice here. Says he'll take the down. Off the whistle, Kasprick looking to stand. Abraham quickly traps the ankle. Now Kasprick to his feet. Tries to spin out. Abraham spins him back to the mat. Now Kasprick spins again. Abraham trips him down one more time. Good scramble by both guys. Abraham riding over that hip. Chance Abraham, the sophomore, is 35 and 8. Brady Kasprick, the senior, is just 12 and 1. Been limited action this year due to his shoulder. He's in the down position here with a minute and 34 left. They look to stand again. And Abraham. Still in control. Kasprick still leading it 4-3. Abraham trying to hang on to Brady's right arm and force him over here and take some back points. Walked his way all the way over to the right shoulder. And blood time again as Abraham got him in the nose. Pequot Lakes fans don't like it, but Abraham got him in the nose with a knee and opened it back up. One minute left in this matchup at 160 pounds. Trying to plug up that nose again. One minute, one second left. Kasprick leading it 4-3 here at 160. Kasprick to his feet. Abraham sticks him down. Kasprick to his feet again. Abraham trips him down again. Kasprick reaching in on a switch. Kasprick trying to power, power that switch through. Needs to get his ankle free. Doesn't have it yet. As Abraham hanging on to Kasprick's right ankle. Now Brady tries to step his way around again. 
Abraham just holding on to that ankle. That's a stall. I'm sorry. All he's doing is holding on to one ankle. Now finally the two points reversal for Gasprick. Gasprick now with a 6-3 lead in 20 seconds left. Back to their feet, make it 6-4 on the escape. And Gasprick takes him down again and gets back points. Gasprick near the edge. Oh, and just off the edge of the mat. Two points near fall for Brady. Gasprick has opened it up to 10-4 with 10 seconds left. A takedown here by Gasprick would give the Prowlers a major decision. And cut this to a two-point matchup. Gasprick promptly puts him on his back, but not long enough. Rolled him through. Five seconds, four, three. Didn't give him two back points for it. Prowlers wanted it, didn't get it. Gasprick wins it 10-4. Prowlers get three and trail it 24-21. And here comes probably the state champion for the road crew, Connor Tulinchik. Expected out here at 170. Cody Weenan out for the Prowlers. Weenan prowling around the mat here, waiting for his opponent. Cody, the senior, is 30 and four. I would expect Tulin check here. But it's not. Trey Truchtenhagen instead. Truchtenhagen, the junior, is 28 and 13. Prowlers down three here. A win evens the match. Anything more than that, and the Prowlers take the lead. Weenan in here heavy on the head. Truchtenhagen hanging onto a leg. Weenan trying to walk him over and expose the back, and they're off the edge of the mat. Truchtenhagen long and lean. And another stalemate here. 107 left. With a minute left to wrestle in the first, nobody has scored. Truck to Hagen down. As he goes heavy on the head, shucks it by and gets two for the takedown. Truck to Hagen trying to scramble through it, but could not. Weenan controls. Weenan setting over the hip here. Truck to Hagen looking to stand. Weenan puts in a leg. And trying to get him turned over. 24-21. Pequot Lakes Pine River back is leading here as we wind down to the final few weight classes. Weenan still has the legs, trying to put in his platel. Weenan has him trapped. Truckton Hagen to drop, fall! Big fall for Cody Weenan. A first period fall for Cody Weenan. 27-24, Prowlers have taken the lead with four weight classes left when we come back. This is Damon, right? Connor Tulinchek here, the defending state champion for the road crew. 
And Damon Ferguson for the Prowlers. Ferguson is 30 and 8 on the year. Tulinchek, by the way, is 38 and 2. Prowlers have taken the lead after being down early. Lead it now 27 24. And after this, there are only three weight classes left. The winning team will move on to the state team duels in two weeks. Tulinchek shoots. Ferguson counters and underhooks on the right side. Ferguson trying to drive forward and then head shuck him down. Tulinchek backs. Now Ferguson gets him to his knees and they'll come back to their feet again. One minute gone here in the first period. Ferguson underhooks again. Ferguson driving forward. Tulinchek retreating. Now steps in on a headlock. Ferguson counters and gets two. Nice counter by Damon Ferguson for the two. Ferguson leading it 2 0 here. 40 seconds left in the first. Tulinchek in a down position. Tries to stand, Ferguson traps that left ankle. Now he gets to his feet and releases and it's 2-1. 2-1 here, Tulinchik in on the head. Has collar tie from the left hand side. They'll dance back to the middle. Ferguson the junior, Tulinchik the senior. Tulinchek in here trying to convert the takedown, drives back on him and gets the two. Tulinchek now leads 3 2 with four seconds left in the period. Our first period is gone at 182 pounds. It's 3 2 in defending state champion Connor Tulinchek. Ferguson chooses a down position on a scramble, gets to neutral, and ties this match at three at 182 pounds. Tulinchik and Ferguson, both normally 170 pounders, going here at 182. And we'll get a stalemate call here. Stalemate the call. Tulinchek down, trying to change levels. Reaches up for the head. One minute left to wrestle in period number two. It's a 3-3 tie. Three weight classes left after this. The Prowler's leading right now, 27-24. They pummel their way in, both of them, and separate again. Down to 45 seconds left here in period two. Ferguson reaches for the underhook on the right hand side. Now trying to get the one on the left, looking for the throw. Ferguson trying to throw him by and they're off the edge right in front of the Pequot Lakes crowd. 26 seconds left here in period number two. Connor Tulinchik, the defending state champion. And Damon Ferguson. Two guys between them have 68 wins this year. Tulinchik shoots, Ferguson sprawls. They stand again, Tulinchik shoots again, and they go off the edge of the mat. Seven seconds left in the period. They'll dance one more time. You're not going to get any scoring. It'll be 3-3 going to the third when we come back.
Tulinchik starts the third the down position in a 3-3 tie, trying to scramble his way free, does. But still an ankle and a leg here. Nope, there's the one. Four three, Tulinchik leads by one. Both men a half step back off the whistle and now starting to stalk. Ferguson reaching for the single. Shoots for it again and Tulinchik sprawls. Now Ferguson trying to pummel his way in with that right arm. Minute and 25 left. Tulik check leading it 4 3. And they'll separate again. Tulin check shoots on a single. Ferguson stuffs ahead. Now Ferguson looks for a snap down. They reach in again. One minute and five seconds left. Tulin check leading it by one 4 3. Four three the score and stalemate. Going to adjust here. Damon Ferguson's leg brace and reset. Forty five seconds left. Damon trails it four three. He shoots in. Tulin check stuffs ahead. And they'll reset again. Collar tie by both men on the opponent's left side. Tulinchek trying to power the underhook on the right side to go with it. And another stalemate. 27 seconds left. Ferguson coming forward again. Tulinchek slaps the mat trying to change levels here and get Ferguson to do something reckless. And a stalling warning on Tulinchek for not coming forward. Ferguson keeps pressing the action here. Tulinchek's not circling. Tries for the throw. And the period comes to an end. No points. And Tulinchek will hang on for a 4-3 victory. Twenty-seven, twenty-seven, with three matches left. Two more seconds, he had him. Paul to hate for the Prowlers and Corbin Knapp for the road crew. Knapp on the year is 34 or 35 and 4. And to hate is 2 and 3, but has not had a chance to get on the mat much. He's been fighting with some injuries. They're off the edge and reset again. Knapp, a natural 195 pounder. DeHate weighed in at 182, so for the second duel in a row, he's given up some weight, napping on a single, and gets two here. By the way, that win by Tulinchek, the first in a while for Pequot Lakes, as they jumped out 24 to six in this thing, and the Fowlers fought, Fowlers fought back to take a 27-24 lead. And somebody went too quick. And we'll reset it. Knapp trying to break down to Haight who looks to get to his feet. 
Waist wrap in from the left hand side, trying to power over an arm bar on the right. And eight manages to belly out and get out of it. Back to a base on the left side, trying to free that arm bar. The hate trying to get that right arm free. Knapp still waist riding arm bar, not trying to improve on it. Now trying to tip off that waist wrap. The hate trying to work to the edge. Eighteen seconds left in the first. It's two nothing nap, and they'll go back to the center on another stalemate. Nap trying to break the heat down again with 13 seconds left. The heat would love to get away. There's that arm bar. Trying to go arm bar and lever, but the heat frees his hand. Down to five seconds, four. That'll be the end of the first period. Two nothing in favor of Nap. They start the second period on their feet. The Heat down 2-0 to Knapp. The Heat driving forward. Knapp backing off and a stalling warning on Knapp. They work again here. The Heat trying to pummel his way in again. Knapp shoots on a single. The Heat drives him forward. And they're off the edge again. Right in front of the prowler bench. The Heat in on the head one more time. Collar tie from the right, left hand side. Knapp looks at a single, changes his mind. Now they're off the edge of the mat and we'll reset it again. Both men dance a little bit. 120 left in the second period here at 195 pounds. Paul to hate for the Prowlers. Nap in on a single and we'll get two more. Four nothing in favor of Nap. It's 27-27 in the match score, which is three weight classes remaining. The hate trying to get to his feet. Nap looking to break him down again. Under a minute to wrestle in period two. They look to stand again. DeHate to his feet. Now a stalling warning given on DeHate. So each man has a stalling warning now. Arm bar here. 15 seconds left. Knapp trying to walk it over. DeHate counters, and they're off the edge. And DeHate coming up a little gimpy on that right leg that's bothered him off and on all year. Seven seconds left here in the second period. Finding blood on the mat, but can't seem to find any on either wrestler. That's a unique situation. The hate to the down position here. Nap will ride right side. The hate looking to set his way out of it. Four seconds, three. Second period is over. The hate with some work to do. Down four nothing.
to eight, starts the third period in the down position here. Knapp trying to roll him up on his shoulders, but the eight counters back to his base. Knapp now with a chicken wing in on the right-hand side, converts it to a arm bar, and stacks to Heat's shoulders and a quick pin. Knapp with a big fall. And a 33 to 27 lead for Pequot Lakes with two matches left. Back in a moment. Austin Starica, the senior out here for Pequot Lakes in the road group at 31 and one on the year. And for the Prowlers, Jolson Sargent, a senior as well at 33 and 12. And a whistle and a stoppage here for off the edge of the mat. Starica and Sargent with the Prowlers down six. Rika trying to throw. If somehow Sargent can pull off even a win here, it would bring it, bring it right down to the heavyweight match. Tough task, though. Starika's a dandy. Working on a collar tie, trying to reach in for Jolson's right leg. Starika trying to throw, which is normally Sargent's move. Sargent looking for the headlock. They step off the mat again, right in front of the Pequot Lakes Pine River Backers bench. And a stalling warning on Jolson. Starika in on the head again, collar tie on the left-hand side, looking for the single. Prowlers want Sargent to run the snap down the next time Starika shoots. Tarika trying to reach for the underhooks. Now changes it to the overhook. Jolson trying for the body lock here. Jolson, Jolson has a really good lateral drop, but it'll be tough against this guy. They pummel their way in again. Now Jolson reaches for a leg, and they're off the edge. Five seconds left in period number one. And that'll end the first. Sargent in the down position to start period number two in what is a scoreless tie here at 220 pounds with Pequot Lakes Pine River Backers leading the match total 33-27. Starika trying to lay all his body weight on Jolson, belly him to the mat. Looking for an underhook on the left-hand side. Sargent separates that, frees his hand. Trying to crawl his way forward. Starika looking for an arm bar. Starika wants a cross face on the right-hand side, trying to reach for a wrist to go with it. Now trying to go power half on the left, has an ankle to go with it. Working the ankle on the right-hand side. Sargent trying to slip out the back door here. Tarika trying to scramble his way around behind. Sargent gets to his feet and turns in and gets the escape and one. And Jolson Sargent with the early lead. 
Sargent leading it one nothing here with less than a minute to wrestle in period two. Tarika down to one knee as he tries to change levels. They're near the edge right in front of the Pequot Lakes bench and they'll go off the edge as Sargent shoots. Dolson steps in again. Sarika looks for a snap. Sergeant underhooks the left-hand side. Both men want to throw. Sarika trying to reach in on the trip. Sergeant slips it and gets two for the takedown. Dolson slips out of it, gets two for the takedown, and takes a 3-0 lead. 20 seconds left here in the second period. Sergeant leads at 3-0. Sarika trying to stand. Sergeant pulls him back down again. 13 seconds left. Starika does stand and gets the escape. Starika on the escape. Nine seconds, eight seconds left here in period two. We'll go to the third at 220 with Jolson Sargent leading it Starika, an early escape here in period three. It's 3-2, three, Sargent. They work near the edge right in front of the scorer's table. Sargent reaching for the head, and they're off the mat and back to the center. A minute and 12 seconds left. Sargent looking at his coaching staff. Sargent steps forward. Starika shoots single. Sargent sprawls and counters. Starika looking for the underhook again. Jolson has a body lock on the right side, down to under a minute to wrestle. Tarika reaching with those long arms for a single, can't get there. Sargent trying a little hip lock, can't get that locked in. Tarika now underhooking both sides, reaching for the trip, and they're off the edge again. Both back on their feet, 44 seconds left to wrestle here. Sargent trying to bring this matchup to the heavyweight match to see who goes to state as a team. Sarika in on the head. Sarika looking to change levels. Now steps in and underhooks again. Trying for the overhook and the throw. The last time he did this, Sargent slipped it for the takedown. Sargent trying to counter his way through. Grabs a single and drives forward, and they're off the edge of the mat. 20 seconds left. Sargent and Sarika, they go forehead to forehead. Sarika shoots. Sargent counters. Now Sargent trying to walk his way in. Sargent getting the body lock, and they're off the edge again. 13 seconds left. Sargent and Starika. Jolson leading it 3-2 here. Crowd getting into it. Starika shoots. Sargent counters. Down to six seconds. Five, four, three. Jolson Sargent's going to win it. 3-2 to the final. And we'll go to the heavyweight match in a close one. Back in a moment. Come on, Cullen, stick him. Leave no doubt, pin him.
Riley Peters and Cullen Bruggeman to decide who goes to state. Peters, the sophomore, is 23 and six. Bruggeman, the senior, is 27 and 17. And Peters with an early takedown. Now Bruggeman an escape. Bruggeman's tie would send it to Criteria, and the Prowlers might have a problem there because of all the pins they've given up. First Criteria's total number of matches won. I haven't looked. A win by Bruggeman, a fall by Bruggeman, and the Prowlers win it going away. The winning team here goes to state in two weeks as a team. They're on their feet. It's 2-1 in favor of Peters and Pequot Lakes Pine River Bacchus here at the heavyweight. Bruggeman has his underhooks in. Peters has the body lock. Peters looking to trip and gets two for the takedown. Bruggeman back to his base looking to stand again. They're near the edge and off. Peters a true heavyweight. Colin weighed in at 220 tonight. So he's given up, oh, I don't know, probably 30 pounds. Peters trying for the arm bar. Bruggeman to his feet and gets away. It's 4-2. I think Colin might be quicker. Prowlers need a Bruggeman win to send it to criteria. If Bruggeman could somehow manage to catch Peters and stick him, the Prowlers would go to state. For sure, and that'll end the first period back in a moment. Bruggeman got the escape, right? Well, Cullen Bruggeman with a quick escape to start the second period. It's 4-3. He's within one. Heavyweight matchup. Bruggeman wins. We go to Criteria. Bruggeman wins by fall. The Prowlers go to State. Peters wins. Pequot Lakes find Rebecca. And Bruggeman catches him and puts him on his back. Bruggeman's got Peters on his back. He's kicking. It's a fall, and the Prowlers are headed to the state tournament. The Prowlers are headed to the state team with a big pinfall. As the Prowlers celebrate. They're trying to calm Cullen down, but you can't blame him. Cullen Bruggeman catches him, picks up six. And the Prowlers, 36-33, claim the second championship. Post-match coverage coming up on Thief Over Falls Sports Radio. Tell Kenny I need him up here.
Oh, who? I want I want Kenny up here. The Thief River Falls Prowlers are headed to the state tournament in the team dual competition after knocking off the fifth-ranked team in the state and handing Pequot Lakes Pine River back as just their second dual loss of the year. Prowlers with a big win by a final margin of 36 to 33 here. The right numbers can matter in your life at Unity Bank and Thief River Falls, Red Lake Falls, and Mentor. They'll help you look at the numbers. A check of the stats. From tonight, in just a moment, we're hoping to get Ken Geyser up here to chat with him before we're all done this evening. Stay tuned, everyone. Back after this from Unity Bank. Kenny! Kenny! Let's take a look at our individual match results in this one. As Ken Geyser trying to make his way up here to us. And the Prowlers headed to the state tournament. Early on in this one, Prowlers trailed early. Gave up a pinfall at 106. Got a fall from Nick Spear at 113, then gave up consecutive falls at 120 and 126. Make sure I've got this right. Excuse me. He gave up falls at 106, 113, then got a fall at 120. 
Gave up a fall at 126. And another one at 132. And we're down 24 to 6. Then the run began. Kale Geyser at 3-1 overtime win at 138. Ethan won a 3-1 winner at 145. Griffin Lundeen wins by fall at 152. Brady Kasprit comes out 145 pounder naturally and beats 160 pounder who had 35 wins on the year by a 10-4 margin. Then Cody Weenan wins by fall at 170. So the Prowlers ran off Wins at 38, 45, 52, 60, and 70. Five wins in a row, and that moved them to the lead at 27, 24. Then a tough loss for Damon Ferguson to Connor Tulinchek at 182. Both are 170 pounders, but Tulinchek's the defending state champion. And Ferguson wrestled him tough, lost 4 3, and was in the match right to the end. In fact, almost got a late takedown to win it. So the Prowlers trailed 27-24 going to the last three weight classes. At 195, Paul DeHate giving up a bunch of weight because he's normally about 182 pounder. Gives up a fall, so the Prowlers trail 33-27. Jolson Sargent gets a hard fought 3-2 win, a smartly wrestled match at 100, 220 pounds. That made it 33-30 and it came down to the heavyweight matchup. If the Prowlers win that match, they just split the matches 7-7, and there would have been more pinfalls for Pequot Lakes. They would have gone on criteria. The Prowlers needed a win from Cullen Bruggeman, their senior at heavyweight, and needed a win by more than just three points, trailing at 36-33. Bruggeman was down 4-2, entering the second, got an escape in the second, then caught Riley Peters, a 23 and six sophomore heavyweight in the throw, put him on his back and pinned him. And the pin falls, six more points for Thief Over Falls. And the Prowlers win it 36-33 here this evening. Handing Pequot Lakes Pine River back is just their second loss of the year, but they're out of the tournament and the Prowlers advance to the state tournament in the team duels. That's our individual stats. Get the numbers that matter with a visit to Unity Bank and Thief River Falls, Red Lake Falls, and Mentor. More post-match coverage coming up. Marin.
the team captains coming forward to accept the section championship trophy. The Prowlers will represent section eight at the state tournament this year. They've just handed out the individual medals. We anticipate that Coach Ken Geyser will be here shortly. Time now for your wrestler of the night. For grain shipping and storage and shipping contact as well, contact Farmers Green LLC in Thief River Falls. Our nominees for tonight, boy, there are a ton of them. You have to look at matches wrestled by guys like Brady Casper, who won twice tonight coming off an injury and gave up weight both times. He beat a 170-pounder and a 160-pounder to get two wins for the Prowlers. You have to look at Damon Ferguson's win, or loss, but the one point loss to the defending state champion, Connor Tulinchik, where he was heavily underdog, and he only gave up three points. You absolutely have to look at Jolson Sargent, who not only couldn't lose if the match was gonna go to heavyweight, but had to battle against another good kid his opponent was 38 and one on the year, and Jolson was 33 and 12. And Sargent pulls out a 3-1 win, or 3-2 win, excuse me. And how do you not look at, Connor, at uh, Cullen Brueggemann? Prowlers had to have a more than three point win to advance to state, and Brueggemann got it. A big pinfall for the senior, and in doing so, they'll go to the state tournament. So tons of nominees, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna name two kids. We'll do that in just one moment after this from the folks at Farmers Grain, LLC. Organizing for a team photo down on the mats are the Prowlers right now. We're still expecting Ken Geyser to join us. Numbers of possibilities for our Farmers Grain LLC Wrestler of the Night tonight. But to be honest, I'm going to go with two kids. Colin Brueggemann for his big pinfall win to seal the deal for the Prowlers when they trailed by three going into the final weight class. The Prowlers needed a bonus point win from their senior heavyweight. And he was battling a good kid. Cullen came in at 27 and 17. Riley Peters was 23 and 6. And Brueggemann not only caught him, but put him on his back and pinned him. And that locked it up for the Prowlers on their way to the state tournament at 36 and, or 36 33 over the Pequot Lakes Pine River Bacchus Road Crew. And if, we, if you joined us late, the big thing on this is Pequot Lakes had lost one duel all year. And the Prowlers got him tonight to advance to the state tournament. So Cullen Brueggemann. Farmers Green LLC Wrestler of the Night, but I also have to give a big nod to senior captain and defending state champion Brady Kasprick. Kasprick wrestled 170 pounds in the first duel of the night, weighing in a 145 pounder, and battled his way to a pinfall, dominating his way to a pinfall in the second period in that one. And then he came out tonight at 160 pounds in the championship matchup against Pequot Lakes Pine River Bacchus wrestled Chance Abrahams. Abraham Abraham was 25 and 8 on the year. Kasprick just in his 15th match of the season came in 12 and 2 and not only did Brady win he won 10-4 to pick up three key points for the Prowlers at a point that that gave the Prowlers Get this right here, a 21-24 a deficit. But he got him within striking distance with that big victory and both times giving up weight. He gave up about 15 pounds to the Pequot Lakes wrestler. He gave up about 25 pounds to the wrestler from Burham tonight and wins them both. So Brady Kasprick with a gutsy performance on really one and a half arms because his right arm, even though he's been giving clearance to wrestle, is in bad shape. And Cullen Brueggemann, the two seniors, are tonight's co-wrestlers of the night. I could have given it to a ton of people in this match, but I got to go Brueggemann for the big win when the Prowlers had to have a multiple point win. And I have to go with Kasprick, who gave up a ton of weight in both duels tonight and gutted his way to two wins for the defending state champion. They are our Farmers Green LLC wrestlers of the night tonight. Still waiting for Coach Ken Geyser. Hang with us. We're going to try and interview him 
in a moment. I told him to come up here. Huh? I told him to come up here, so. I did Drew. Okay. But he's Kenny. Yeah. But for all the people who couldn't come and listen, they need to hear what he has to say. Huh? I don't have one. I'm just getting out of this commercial. Okay. Well, don't be in a hurry now. Tap your forehead. I'm uh, hugging people. I must have got somebody's uh, head here, I think. Well, we had to wait just a little while for all the celebration down on the floor, but head coach for the Prowlers, Ken Geyser, has joined us now. And would ecstatic be a big enough word? I I'm not sure there is. Okay, now why can't I hear you? This has worked Testing. all night long. Testing. Hang on here. Talk to me, coach. Testing, testing, testing. Got anything yet? Hang on. Testing. Two times each. Yeah, check, it's a, check, check. here. We'll do it this way. All right, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. Like I said, would ecstatic be a big enough word? Yeah, I don't know. You could throw out 13, 14 words, but um, this is what we envisioned, and, and we knew we had to wrestle our best. And I knew if it came down to our last two weeks, we had a shot. That's what we told Jolson and Colin all week. If we get it down to you two guys, we have faith in you two guys. When you look at this one tonight, as I did my Wrestler of the Night nominations, I could have gone a whole lot of ways. There were kids all throughout the lineup that gutted out big performances uh, in this win this evening. You know, you start, you start right away down here. Your own son, Kale, had to go overtime tonight and got a big win for you. Ethan Lane, I thought, right away followed that up with a big win. Those two right away kind of got you rolling a little bit. Yeah, some hard-fought wins. You know, the Sequat team, you can tell they spend time in the weight room. They're well coached. Um, they wrestle really well. And uh, getting those early hard-fought wins at 38 and 45, uh, I think helped propel. You know, Griffin Lundin wrestled great. Braden Casper wrestled great. Cody Keenan got a huge win um, to, to make sure, probably went down to heavyweight. Damon Ferguson losing by one point to the two-time state finalist. Um, you know, up and down that lineup, I thought we had effort tonight. And that's what we talked about was effort. Well, those were the points I was going to make. You, you look on down as, as we go through this then, you know, Griffin does his job, but we've kind of come to expect that of Griffin, sophomore or not, over the last few years. But then uh, you bring Brady, and he gives up about 15 pounds at least, wrestling at 160 after beating a kid but giving up almost 25 pounds in the first duel of the night. He guts it out on really one-and-a-half arms and comes up with two big victories for you tonight. He did. I tell you what, I'm super happy for Brady. Um, it's been a, a whirlwind of a week. Um, situation with Brady, not pleasant, not fair, but Brady took it like a champ, and, and he, he competed for his team tonight, and that's what he said. He, he wants his team to go to the state tournament. So guess what, Brady Casper, you are going to the state tournament. Then you talked about Cody's win and a huge pinfall for you. That really gave you some momentum into the last third of the matches. Yeah, a lot of times we tell our guys to be dangerous, and I, I, I tell kids to be themselves. Like Cody Weenan, be Cody Weenan. Well, he had a spoil. He's a senior. He's probably done that 25 times in his career. So Cody Weenan was dangerous, and he was Cody Weenan. Um, and those are the types of things you need to win big duels like this. And super happy for him. He's been a great leader for us this year, and it's just been it's been fun to watch that kid grow up through the years. And that he gets to help lead a team to the state tournament is, is awesome. Damon Ferguson may have lost his match tonight. But another five seconds, I think he beats Tulinchek because he was on, the, was on the edge of a of a takedown right at the end of the mat when the when the horn went off. He wrestled about as well as he could against one of the top kids in the state. Yeah, he did. Damon gave all heart, and that's what I'm talking about too. Even our kids who lost, Damon, I think, pumped the rest of our team up. You know, by by taking Tulinchek to the wire. You know, and, and, and Damon's had a nice year, and and that was a huge momentum booster, even though he lost. Of course. Talk about kids taking one for the team. Paul DeHate twice tonight gave up 20 plus pounds. Got beat twice, but battled in two big matches. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen Paul DeHate before, but I think mm -hmm. you like what you see. Oh yeah. The kid's in good position. He's got some offense. He's just an overall fun kid. So we're just glad he's back on the map. 
And Jolson Sargent, you talked about that, setting it up for Cullen Brueggemann, keeping the match alive in the heavyweight match, and really not in typical Jolson fashion. He's a kid that's normally heck bent for leather, I guess is the best way to say it. He just kind of throws it out there and goes as hard as he can, full bore, or whatever happens may happen. And uh, he wrestled, I thought, a very smart match. Yeah, a super strategic win for Jolson. A very unconventional win for him. Usually he wins unconventionally. Usually someone's on their back a couple times. This one, he gutted one out, and that kid's 30 and 1. So what a great win for Jolson. Super happy for him. Um, he did what he had to do to give us a chance at heavyweight. You know, and Cullen may be a senior, and the kid he beat, Peters, might be a sophomore. But the Peters kid is 23 and 6. So he's a sophomore with some pretty, pretty good clout. And, and Cullen caught him. And when he got him on his back, never gave him a chance to breathe. Yeah, Colin, um, that guy's 23 and 7 now with two losses to Colin. And uh, I tail behind the bench. He likes to be a coach. He's like, hey, we just have to win. We have a tiebreaker. I said, we ain't just going to win. I said, Colin's only takedowns are throws. So we're going to pin. And sure enough, we did. You know, Colin, he's had a great year. He's had, he's wrestled at one heck of a tough schedule. But he's went with everybody. And I think that helped him in a match like this. He got down. I wasn't worried. Colin's been down before. And, uh, and getting that pin was just for Colin's athletic career. Kind of some icing on the cake for uh, some of the hard knocks he's had through the years. And, 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 and even this year in wrestling, he's had some tough losses. That was a huge one for him, the team, our program, our community. Super happy for him. Some of these matchups tonight, both against Purim and Pequot Lakes, Pine River Backus, are going to make the coaches meeting very interesting next week down in Melrose. Yeah, it will. <laughs> Jolson lost against Purim and won against the 31 kid. There's a good example. Yeah, it will be. But you know you got to wrestle the matches next week in the AFC section, so I don't take too much stock in the section seating. I mean, I, I, I'd like to get put in a good place, but it is what it is. All right, I've asked you this just about every year you and I have known each other at this point in the season. I don't get to do it Monday on something like Sports Monkeys anymore. Realistically, how many of these kids can represent the Prowlers individually as well as the team? You know, to be honest, you ask us every year. This is the most up in the air I've seen. I think from two to eight. Okay, I'd be happy with four or five. Um, but our, our section's loaded at every weight. So no one's got an easy path. So two to eight, anywhere in between. And as a team, you're probably going to be an unseated team because you beat, I mean, you're going to get some credit for beating Pequot Lakes who lost just once. But depending on what the other upsets are, the odds are you're on the outside looking in come the seeding process. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if we could even have a, play for that five seed um, you know our section's pretty tough this year I think people know it we haven't lost any other teams uh, in double A but double A is so loaded we're probably looking at a six seed but they don't see the six seed so we'll see ultimately you're going as a team now the challenge turns to individuals next week yeah you know one thing that this does you know we've done this before this is our fourth trip to the state tournament um, the pressure's off a little bit everyone's going to the state tournament so from here, it's just now individually, let's get it on next week, and, and the whole team's going anyway. So some of those kids that are worried about their trip, it's locked up. Let's just throw wrestle loose next week and have some fun. Coach, congratulations on a big win. Thank you. Coach Ken Geyser, head coach of the Prowlers. They beat Pequot Lakes Pine River Backers tonight by a 36-33 final to move on to the state wrestling meet. As a team, now the individuals are next week in Melrose. For all of our sponsors, Big Mike at the station, and everybody else, hope you enjoyed Prowler Wrestling tonight. Good night from Detroit Lakes.